Hello and uh, welcome to another video by Give Energy. And let's look at the EMS Energy Management System installation. This one is with two AC coupled inverters. And um, this is in our lab in our headquarters here. So the next thing we want to look at is uh, the metering and the network cable between the metering, uh, the e inverters and the EMS. So this is our metering uh, cupboard. We have four meters in here. Um, I've got a grid meter, which is the blue and white. The orange and white is PV meter. Uh, the green and white and the brown and white are both load meters. Uh, the first two are ID ones, the third one is an ID one, and the fourth one is an ID two. Please take notice of uh, the connection of the cables. It says single pair. Okay, single pair, not two pairs. Let's just turn that on, make sure they're working. Yes, they are. I've just paused the video here for a second. And uh, don't use Multiple pairs is the pair of wires because that won't work. Um, we're dealing with network cabling, and um, I tend to pick a colour scheme. So uh, you'll find that my solid colours are always the negative, and my white colours or the light colours, the banded ones, so it's a blue and white banded one, uh, will always be the positive side of the circuit. I always start at the meter. I never start at the inverter because meters, the meters are very difficult to wire up as they are. Um, so because they're very small holes there and trying to get two part, uh, wires in there can be extremely difficult. You tend to get breaks on the cables uh, and everything else happens there. So I always try and start off at the meter. Easiest place to start and then work my way with a single CAT5 or CAT6 cable, this is CAT6 in this instance, all the way through to the inverter, the first inverter, in this case this will be inverter 2, in and out of that inverter to the next inverter, which is inverter 1, which takes the grid meter, in and out of inverter 2, uh, onto the EMS. And I've used uh, all the pairs in the CAT6 this time, um, even though um, meters three and four are going to go to the same port which is port two it's just as easy for me to double the wires up at the ems or at an inverter because the socket on the ems or the little plug and or the little plug on the inverter is a lot easier to wire up to and if you make a mistake it's a lot easier just to pull that plug out have a look and test rather than have to go back to the meter to try and find out which direction the fault is that's just a handy tip for you so start off at the meters wherever possible even if it means a longer length of cable it doesn't matter if you're using the single twisted pair method as shown at this meter here you will not have any problems so i'll restart the video now so there we go turn the meters on again and um, that's my plug there and this is where it's going to go so well, let me turn that camera around always a bit iffy when you're using a camera so we are going to connect to um, connection point six i'll get my pen out and I just point to it so that's connection point six that we're going to connect to that's where the meters would normally connect to that's okay that's where we're going to connect to on uh, on here the other one that you can see there is the battery uh, connection point and the one behind that is obviously the ct clamp Although we've set the, we're going to set the inverters to CT, we're not going to wire to that point. We're always going to wire to the meter. So here you can see how I've looped the cable through. So I've kept a twisted pair connection and I've got my blue and white connection on there. And that's going to go in that same point there, which is connection point six. And there's my EMS on the wall. And uh, on the EMS are two six-way connectors. 
I'll just unplug them. So here we can see. Uh, let's get that a bit clearer if I can. Okay, freeze there. So here we can see white, blue, white, orange. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Grid, PV, port 1, port 2, of the EMS. And then uh, on port 3, let's get that uh, cable up in front of us. There we go. Let's see if we can freeze on that a little bit. So port 3 is those middle two. So it's 3 and 4 there. Port 4 is not being used. The other ones on there are a CAN bus port. So port 3 on that one. And you can see both the neg both the positives go into one side, the, the, the left-hand side, and the negatives go to the right-hand side. Okay, so we're going to plug them into there. On the EMS, you can put your EMS in whichever way round you want. It doesn't matter. There we go. Plugged in. Okay. Well, you might have noticed I've used little bootlaces there because I've folded the wires up and the uh, bootlaces because we uh, have them in and out all the time. Hey, the Wi-Fi antenna goes to the single uh, antenna output. Uh, and the power connector connects um, next to the LED light. We can see at the minute. Uh, inverters in error mode because we've still got to make some changes to the inverter and we supply the little power supply oh, okay so let's set up the uh, inverter these are very easy to do so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make some basic settings on them so we would set up um, that inverter to CT clamp mode. No, we're putting the, the plug into the meters, that's fine. We don't want the inverter to read the meter. The EMS will do that. Uh, but it gives us the quickest point to connect between all the systems, meter, inverter, EMS, uh, to do that all in a, just a single pair rather than uh, using lots and lots of pairs. Um, I also go and check is eco enabled, um, is DC discharge enabled, or, uh, or is AC charge enabled? Because we really want those off. So I just do a quick check of those just to make sure they're off. So what we don't want to do is we don't want to do a restart while it's in eco mode. It's not it's not good for the inverter. And we make sure that the time settings are all zero 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 zero. Becomes more apparent when we get to the commissioning stage. Um, because that will set up these uh, times for you. Uh, as we've got two inverters to look at, we'll look at the second one in a second. There we go. I'm on the second one. And uh, that's already at no meters. Uh, so we must be on uh, the correct firmware on this one. Uh, oh, we've got charge enabled so make sure that's off eco is not on enable dc discharge is not on okay so next is firmware so we've set the inverters up we're going to set now the uh, firmware up and uh, we'll have a quick look at the two inverters we've got here i think this one's on the right firmware but that's okay. If you put the EMS and the two inverters into the same account before you get to this point, uh, it will offer you the right firmware. It'll tell you which one you should be on, tell you what the latest is, which is 282 and 291. So ARM loads that first. Always load ARM first. And you're going for um, plant EMS. It'll be in the list for you. Press update firmware. You'll see the progress bar at the bottom. It'll go across in the middle. It'll go across to 100%. And then a, a green flag will come say completed. And then you can load the DSP. Okay, so we're going to load the DSP and off it goes and loads that all up. Right, so I've just paused the video there. So only when they've both come back to say 100% ready to go, then and only then restart the inverter. Okay. If you battery firmware needs updating, do that at the same time. So let that go and do this first, then come back to the firmware page, find the, new, the up to date battery firmware, load your battery firmware as well. If you do it now, it'll save you time during the commission phase. 
So all the commission phase is going to do is going to come back and load that firmware. So um, you might as well do it now and then you're under control and you know everything's come back and you're ready to go. Uh, and then we can go to the commission phase, which is what we're going to show next. Okay, uh, I've uh, moved the video on a little bit. Uh, so we're now at the commission phase. And uh, this is where we set it up. So the first part you'll come to is start the commission. So you start commissioning on there and you will be presented with uh, plan TMS. And then however many inverters you've got, one, two or three. Uh, three is the maximum. You can run it with one, but it's not really going to save you anything so uh, but it'll come up there so we'll start with the um, EMS first we'll just uh, pro start progressing that uh, so let's move forward and uh, start the um, commission uh, and uh, we'll select EMS in a second Okay, so there's EMS, and on this one, remember, we've got four meters, so I've set the meters. Uh, port 1, ID 1, import, export, that's my grid meter. Port 2, generation 1. If you had a second generation port, so another PV1, you would do that as an ID 2. So that's ID 1. On this one, we've only got the 1. And then I've done load heat pump and an extra load one. I, I've just decided to, to show you that you can do two loads and they're ID1 and ID2. So that's all you really need to do for the EMS and then just press the save icon to save that part of the commission and then it will move on to the inverter. Okay, so we've moved on to the inverter and I've set the battery. It's a 9.5 and the serial number for it. I'm going to save that one and I've decided to skip the EPS on this one. There's not an EPS on inverter one. And we start on inverter two. So again, the next battery is a 9.5, set the serial number. And I've enabled EPS this time. Uh, single socket is what I've selected. And once I've saved that, it'll say, do you want to progress? And yes, we do. I'll go and you've got uh, EMS, inverter 1 and inverter 2. So I always pick to start with the inverters first, let them progress because they've got to do grid resets and lots of other things in between. And it's got to set the times and dates or already start those first. Uh, and when I've given them sufficient time, because you'll see them flicker and come on and off um, if you're on site. And uh, then I do the EMS. So we start with the inverters first and then configure the EMS last because all that's got to do with the EMS is just set the date and time and then restart it and I want it to restart it when the inverters have come back because they would have uh, been ready to go okay I've done that one and then you come to the complete checklist uh, so we're having to wait for it to run through its checks this can take a little while. Um, the EMS will take two to three minutes to run through all of its checks and gain control of the inverters if the wiring's correct and you've done it the way that I've shown. Um, it will eventually connect up. And here we go. So the EMS is happy. It's got everything you need in there. Inverter two is happy. Inverter three is not happy because it's got an extra battery on it. Uh, that's because that was a, a prototype battery and I haven't installed it anywhere else. So if you've swapped batteries, the commission process will swap those batteries over for you. So you should come up with three greens. Okay. Um, if you've got a red somewhere, it could be that there is an error with the wiring. Trust me, uh, there are a lot of errors with the wiring sometimes. Um, on mine, I've done so many that uh, I don't see many uh, errors. I still make the occasional mistake and haven't put the plug on correctly. Um, but it's better to 
get to this point and then go and have a look to see uh, where you've gone wrong and we'll discuss um, issues to look at on uh, error codes because the EMS will give you an error code. Um, so this one has worked perfectly okay. As you can see, we've come back to the EMS and we've got three inverters on this one. So this is what it would look like. So it's green, it's happy, it's been started uh, and it's running. But occasionally you get times when it's not so happy. Oh, we'll just have a look through the data to show what it would look like normally. So we can see we've got a charge, uh, discharge in there. So this one's been running for a while. But I want to really just move this video on to um, Erica so we can have a look on those. Okay, let's look at error codes. And uh, how they can help you a little bit. So here there's one that's in error. It says 8003. That's because the inverters have not connected up correctly. And in this one we can see a 002 error, which tells me that one of the inverters has got a problem. Um, there is an error code list that comes out that will tell you what's happening. So we'll have a quick look at that error code in a second. Let's have a quick look. And there we go. So these are the error codes. 8003 configuration mismatch. I hadn't put any inverters on that one deliberately to create an error. And um, 8002, all inverters lost. Check the wiring. In fact, if it's 8003, check the wiring. Um, 8001 means your grid meter communications failed. Uh, check the wiring to the meter, which is why I said start at the meter first, because it's easier then to check that. And if it's an 8000, that's because the clock time needs resetting. Sometimes if there's a power cut, and it's a considerable amount of time throughout the day, um, when it comes back on, you might have to just reset the time the customer can do that so go to uh, remote control find where it says time date press send that's it it'll all come up and running and um, you've got the warning ones uh, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0001 is uh, your grid meter connections failed um, check the check the wiring check the meter make sure it's turned on or 0, 002 means the the inverter's lost. We can't see it. It's not reporting to us. Generally, you'll get that if you've got a, an issue with the battery or something like that stopping it from running. Well, that's basically it. Um, if you have any issues, um, just always check your wiring. You're looking for between four and five volts sometimes 3.9 3.8 can be seen at the end check the polarity it is always on the 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 equipment on the inverter left hand side is positive right hand side is negative same with the ems left positive right hand side negative don't use bunch pairs so single pair you might see a pair going in and out of the connection that's fine, but it's not bunched in that case. It's still a single pair that's just continuous its route. At the beginning of the video, you'll see how I've wired it up uh, and keep restarting. Uh, once you fix that, if you just restart the MS, it'll come up and run. And uh, again, I'll uh, end the video with uh, the error codes again, because this is what you'll see on the front if there's an issue. Uh, and if you resolve all of your problems, and it will be wiring, if anything, um, it will be clear. It's like a nice clean signal single twisted pair please okay thank you for watching this short video